Welcome to iClone 4. In this tutorial, you'll learn about the user interface as well as the basics of a few tools. So, let's go ahead and get started. Notice at the top, you have seven different tabs. For instance, we have Project, where we can add in new project, or open an existing project, or save a project. If we click on Stage, notice that the buttons have changed, and you have options to help set the stage such as image layers, 3D scenes, atmospheres, fogs, as well as camera and lighting. If you click on set, you can build your setup using props, trees, grass, particles, terrain, water, sky, as well as add in music or video textures. If you click on actor, you would be able to add in an avatar, and notice we already have an avatar in the scene, so we could change her persona, her hair, her upper body, her lower body, add in gloves, change her shoes, add some accessories, as well as change her skin. Notice since we have a character in scene, we also can access the head tab. This is where we can load in a new image or change the texture of her existing face. Or we can just change her face altogether. We can also add in eyes as well as change the teeth for her mouth. The next tab is animation where we can bring in animation or create our own with motion layer as well as add in path. We can also add in facial animation as well as animation for her hands. The last tab is export, where we can export our project as either an image, a video, or an image sequence, or a widget output for widget cast or widget me. So let's go back to project, and I want to show you the next part, the content manager. Notice since I have projects selected, you can see all the default projects that are designed to help you learn iClone. You can do this for all of your tabs to go through all the different types of content that you have in your iClone 4. So let's go ahead and build a scene real quick by going into props and go to 3D blocks and let's add in a floor. Then let's add in a 3D block such as a ball. And we can also throw in another one such as a podium. Now let's take a look at the scene manager. Notice that I have an avatar which is violet. And I also have three props such as the floor, the ball, and the podium. And notice that whenever I'm in the scene manager and I click on the content type, that content will now be highlighted in my preview window. So if I want to quickly find Violet in my scene, I just click on Violet and she is highlighted for me. There will be other tutorials that help you learn more about the scene manager and the uses of the scene manager. Next I want to take a look at the modify panel, which is located on the right side of the user interface. Notice that I have an avatar selected, so therefore the, the options in the modify panel are based on that of an avatar, such as adjust proportions, fingers, as well as transform and other tools. If I select, say, this podium here, notice that the modify tools have changed. For instance, I have only pivot, transform, path, and other tools that are not identical to the ones that are for the avatar. There will be tutorials that will help you learn more about the functions of Modify Panel. In this tutorial, I just want to introduce the fact that we have the Modify Panel and that if you wish to change anything for your avatar or any of your content, that the Modify Panel will most likely have the tool that you're looking for. Next, let's take a look at how to navigate in a 3D space. Notice I have my avatar selected, so if I press the Home key, I'll automatically have the camera home in on her. But if I wish to say home in on the podium, I can just click on the podium and then press home and I'll home in on the podium. I can do the same with the scene manager, click on violet, press home, and I now home in on her. But if you don't like this camera angle and you say wish to have a camera angle that is located on her face, you can just press face by using this camera option. Or if you want to look directly at her front, you can press front. And notice there are several different others, so you can just choose which one is best for you. Next is the zoom key, which when I press the zoom key, I can zoom in and zoom out. So zoom out, then zoom back in. If I press the pan key, I can pan up or down, or to the left or right. If I use the orbit key, I can orbit above her, or I can orbit around her. Notice that I'm only adjusting the camera angle, that the scene is not moving, just only the camera is moving. Next, I want to show you the Move tool. The Move tool is located here, and if you press it, you can move the character backwards and forwards, 
and left and right. Notice now that the camera is not moving, but the character is moving. I can also use my mouse wheel and I can mouse wheel her up or mouse wheel her down. Next is the rotate tool where I can rotate her right or left. And the next one I can't use with an avatar is the scale tool so I'll click on my podium. Now when I click on the scale tool I can scale the, the object larger or smaller. There's one other tool I want to show you called the gizmo but to access it we first have to go to our preferences to make sure that it's turned on. So let's go up and click on the hammer. This will open up all the preferences for iPhone 4. This is the one I wish to change. So let's click on the transform gizmo and press OK. So let's take a look at move first. But first I'm going to press the alt key to be able to pan down to look directly at my podium. OK, notice that you have a blue arrow. If you press that blue arrow, you can move the object up and down. If you grab the red arrow, you can move the object left and right without the ability of moving it up and down or backwards and forward, only to the left or right. I'm going to press the Alt key again, then use the right mouse button to orbit around my podium. And notice you have a green arrow here. If I press the green arrow, I can move the, the object backwards and forwards, but I cannot move it up and down or to the left and right, only backwards and forwards. Notice also you have purple square, a bluish green square, and a yellow square. If you grab the purple square, you will be able to not only move left and right, but also up and down. So you can adjust both the blue and the red arrow simultaneously. If you do the same with the bluish green square, the turquoise square, you can adjust the green, moving it up and down and backwards and forwards, but you can't move it to the left or right. And you can do the same with yellow. You can adjust the red and the green arrow, but not the blue arrow. You can also do this with rotate. For instance, you grab the green and you can rotate using the gizmo. Or you can grab the red and rotate. Or the blue and rotate. And if I do this with scale, I can scale up for blue, scale green, or scale red. Or if I wish to have a uniform scale, I just grab yellow and I can scale the entire object in all directions uniformly. Now I'm going to show you how to use the right click menus. If you just choose a character or a prop and right click on the character and access her transform, her appearance, add a path, as well as other options such as perform where I can have her say something like talk01. And now she'll run through the animation of talking. And notice that down here on the time scrub you can see that it's actually playing out the action. If I press stop then she will stop and the timeline will return back to the very beginning and she will go back to her original pose. If I press play, then she will start to run through her animation again. I can also grab the time scrub and move backwards and forwards through her animation sequence. There will be more on animation in other tutorials, I just wanted to show you how to use the time scrub to move back and forth through the animation. You can also access the timeline, that's if you have iClone 4 Pro, and you can go deeper into modifying your animation sequences for the timing and other things. I'm going to stretch out my timeline a little so we can see it more clearly. If I click on command, you'll notice I have idle animation, move animation, perform, and you can see the animation of talk01. Notice if I move the animation talk01 to here, if I press play, both this red line as well as this time scrub will move together. So if I go to the beginning of the animation, you can see here this gold bar representing the animation and you can see that there's a small gap such as this gap here in the timeline as well as on the time scrub. If I move the animation back to the very beginning to start on frame zero then you'll notice that the gold bar has also moved back on the time scrub. There will be other tutorials that will teach you more about timeline as well as the time scrub and playing options to help make your animation as well as your project run smoothly. But for this tutorial, that's about it, showing you how to use the user interface and where you can find the tools that you need to create your projects. So I wish you good luck and have fun.